get to the word so without further delay pastor tim ross can you come lavish the word of the lord on us right now in the name of jesus be ready to receive because today is your day as well hallelujah love you brother thank you just remain standing for a moment i'm so grateful uh, for the honor to be here to celebrate my dear friend a true multi-hyphenate all of the time that we have spent doesn't even scratch the surface it is so hard to contain and explain 30 years in 30 minutes or even a couple of hours but I hope that you feel honored. I hope that you feel seen and heard and known and loved because we are here because we love you. And we celebrate what God has done in your life. The book of Luke, chapter. 14 I want to read a few verses in your hearing so I can give you a context to what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and to continue to make the decisions that have to be made, to live a life for Jesus for 30 years, let alone ministry. Just what it takes to be a disciple of Jesus for 30 years and counting. You don't get here by accident. You don't get to 30 years of doing anything by happenstance it takes intentionality commitment devotion and a lot of getting back up again and so here's what Jesus says to a great multitude that was with him as often he does he waits to the following is focused on him before he turns around to address them. Jesus had this very unique way of making it difficult for his following to keep following. J Jesus always had a way of turning around to do a quality assurance check with his following. Why are you still here? I know what you, I know what attracted you to me, but I need to know why are you still here? And he always said stuff that made people have to go home and think, I don't know if I want to see him tomorrow. I like the lunch and I like the miracles, but why he always saying stuff that make me mad or uncomfortable? or makes me second guess if I actually want to do this. This passage is no different. Here's what he says. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Dang, Jesus. I thought you was cool. You want me to hate my mama? <laughs> and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, 
all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000 or else. While the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. I want you to pay close attention to the 28th verse. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. Uh, with the time that I have in this celebration, I want to speak to you from a message, two words, still counting. Still counting. You don't get to 30 years unless you're still counting. My wife and I uh, built our first house in 2007. I had finally had a job that was stable enough uh, for us to look for a house. Got my credit score in order had been at the job for more than two years, had my pay stubs in order, and, and now you're going through this, for first time home buyers, this stressful process to purchase a home. We, we found the house that was in our budget. Um, we, we got to see it built from the ground up. Uh, we gave Bank of America our money. We gave the, the, the builder the deposit, the down payment. Uh, they had to do all of this uh, credit check and, and lifestyle check and make sure your debt to ratio income was in alignment. And then they came back and told me if I didn't have some more paperwork that they weren't gonna be able to fund the loan. And by that time I was so stressed that I told them you can have the house back. I don't have no more paperwork for you. They said, we, we, we need this document or, or you can't have the house. I said, ma'am, I am not under a bridge. I'm renting, we do want a house, but I didn't lose the document you're asking for. I've never had it. So if that's the document you need, you're never gonna get it and you tell that ambiguous loan officer that I said he can have a house. <laughs> and all the stress and fear that was supposed to be on me leapt on her. And she said, oh no, Mr. Ross, we gonna fix this. <laughs> and then that boldness of the Holy Spirit kicked in. I was like, fix it then. <laughs> we got the house. And, and we moved in the house, and, and, and we love the house. Four bedroom, two bath, 2,200 square feet. It's our first house. I'm ready to populate the house. I'm ready to do Genesis 2 and expand. We are going to be fruitful and multiply. We're going to subdue. We're going to replenish and refresh. And the excitement of the house soon faded when the mortgage payments came. I thought I had just given y'all all the money. They was like, yeah, that was just to get in here. The light bulb blew out. My renter memory was so fresh, I forgot the lights was my issue now. I was like, call the man to fix the light. They said, it's you the man. 
That's your light. The grass is this big. It was a zero lot, but that was our grass. And if it didn't get cut, we look sloppy. So, so you, you didn't just get to count the cost of the house to move in. You got to furnish it. All them rooms is bare. And your apartment furniture don't look good. That couch don't go there. You still saving, ain't you? You, you, that can't be the couch that you meant for this. You got another couch coming, don't you? you I'm gonna give you some grace, but you gotta have another couch coming. You have to make a decision. See, see, we live in a, a, a culture now. I love the wording and the phrasing, but, but, but because I'm a literalist, I'm always like, mm, fix it. That ain't what that, you're saying something, but you don't even know what you're saying. Here, here's the colloquialism that, that, that is in our church culture now that I hear so many people say. Thank you for your yes. And, and before I can say you're welcome, I, I, the, the literal side of me is like, if it was only one yes, I could respond and say, you're welcome. But you don't get to 30 years of nothing saying yes one time. See, see, the proper context would, would be for us to say, thank you for your yeses. Because one yes don't get you to 30. One yes won't get you to three. You have to say yes again and again. And again, just like you have to pay that mortgage again. And again, have you noticed most mortgages are fixed for 30 years? Wow. That, that when you sign your name on that loan document, you are committing every single month to pay into something you got into Today, you stepped into it today, but you'll be paying for it for the next 30 years. To hear the testimony of my friend say, uh, I went to my mom and told her that I felt this burden to preach, but I did not want to do it. But I could not shake it. He stepped into it, but he's been paying for it. For 30 years. And these payments are expensive. The highlight reel looks amazing. I sat here and watched all them videos. They made me sick. <laughs> I can't stand multi-hyphenated, super talented, can do everything, Negroes. They make me sick, pick one. Stop showing off. Pick a thing and do that thing. Don't sing and then preach and then act. And then direct. And then write. Stop it. Pick one. The less talented people have to do one thing. He over here, and next I will do. The highlight reel looks amazing. But there's no highlight reel for the tears. There's no highlight reel for the insecurities. 
There's no highlight reel for the pain that wrote the lyrics. There's no highlight reel for the pain that birthed the play. There's no highlight reel for the pain that birthed the laughter. But those are the payments. The highlight reel is the furniture. The, the payments are, are never going to show up on the highlight reel. But if there's not another yes, we don't get to this day. If there's not another yes, we don't get to this moment. And so I just stopped by to encourage some people in this room that you have to count the cost. Because it's not something you count up one time. You have to keep counting. I came to remind somebody today that as awesome as this day is for Dr. Pastor. John W. Gray, the third. He is still counting. When you see him come in here next week, you need to understand that he is still counting. That every time he gets up to preach, he is still counting. That every day he gets up to pray, he is still counting. When he gets ready to have another fellowship with the men, he is still And wouldn't it be a travesty if he's counting and we not? Wouldn't it be a travesty to walk in here week in and week out and watch his count and you subtracting while he's adding to his faith and adding to his character and adding to his mental health and adding to what he needs to do to be the man of God that God has called him to be, we come in and subtract from what he is adding. Touch somebody and say, I'm still counting. I'm still counting. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Somebody say, I'm still counting. I'm still counting. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Somebody say, I'm still counting. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, but we still counting 31. This is where I'm starting prophesying. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, because there will be 37, 38, 39, 40. Somebody say, I'm still counting. Prophesy, Tim, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, until we get in keys to the city, until we, are, until we are in favor with governors, until we are shaping nations, 47, 48, 49. Don't stop your count. I don't know who I'm talking to, but don't stop your count. I don't know what you're going through right now, but don't stop the count. You might have only been saved for eight months, but don't stop the count. You may have been saved for 11 years, but don't you stop the count. It doesn't matter what age and stage you are at. You still have to keep. Have you ever been trying to concentrate on counting? And one of your stupid friends. It's, not, it's never a smart friend. It's always one of the dumb ones. You're over there, I mean, really concentrating. 12, 13, 14. And they're like, 49,052. 890, 11. And you're like, shut up, shut up. I'm trying to focus, I'm trying to count. 
That's what the enemy comes to do with the count. While you're trying to stay focused on the count, while you're trying to stay focused on counting the cost of what he's called you to do, the enemy starts coming in with different numbers. Oh, it's been 30 years of ministry. But remember them three days of thoughts? Oh, it's 30 years of ministry. Do you remember that four months of pain? Oh, it's 30 years of ministry. Do you remember that whole year you asked God and he didn't respond? He's trying to mess up the count. Because in between yeses, there are temptations of noes. In between yeses, there will always be a temptation to disrupt the count. Peter ran into this. A man who has seemingly already counted up the cost told Jesus to his face, I will never leave you. Jesus said, no, you're going to deny me three times. Bet I won't. <laughs> I got your back. He said, Be before this rooster crows three times, you would have denied me. He was like, I'll never do it. And then things got so bad that the count got disrupted. And when the count gets disrupted, yeses turn into noes. Aren't you the one that's been with Jesus? No. No, you, you look like him, no. And you got that same temper. No, it wasn't me. No, nah, but you have that same accent as him. You sound just like him. Beep, 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 beep. That's the censor part of the text if you... Peter went to cussing and swearing to prove that he wasn't and still sounded like he was. You ever tried to backslide? Anybody beside me ever try to backslide? And, and then like, you can't even black, backslide, right? <laughs> I remember when I first started my count, when I first gave my life to Jesus, I started my count. And um, I wanted to be a homicide detective. Since the age of four years old, I wanted to work in law enforcement. My mother worked for the LAPD for 30 years. And I wanted to be in law enforcement, specifically homicide detection, um, uh, because it's kind of dark in my head and I don't have a problem with dead bodies at all. Um, but also because I'm not as brave as the people that worked in L.A. that um, uh, worked the, the beat. I wanted to show up after everybody was dead. <laughs> it's just smart. I don't show up to shots fired. I show up to someone's dead. And so that's what I wanted to do with my whole life. And I went through all the process I given my life to Jesus Christ. I, I uh, filled out the application to become a cadet. I had passed all of the prerequisite tests. I got to the psychological evaluation. And because I had just given my life to Jesus, I overshared. What is a blessing in this season of my life was a liability back then. I overshared. And they failed my psych. And I told the Lord, see? That's why I don't fool with you like this. I backslid. My count got interrupted. I went back to the club. On a Saturday. I had been saved under a year. So I still had my moves. could still do that. So I was like, I'm going to go back in. So I go back and I'm in there. I'm going to leave it here. I'm not going to show you everything I did, but I was in there. I'm not even counting no more. I'm just in there. And this big dude 
drinking what seemed to be a fit the hen, walked over to me while I'm doing this. And he said, hey man, what you doing here? I said, I'm chilling, bro. He said, nah, little homie, you don't belong here. I said, I don't even know you. He said, little homie, you need to go home, fool. You don't even fit here. And I said, Lord, did you just send a sinner? To tell me to go home? This is very rude of you. I, I was still going to go to church tomorrow. I was so angry. Because he was so right. I did not fit. My no didn't work. Because he had already heard my yes. I don't know who I'm preaching to in this portion of the message, but somebody in here has stopped counting and the Lord just sent me to get you back to your count. He sent me back in here to tell you, you left off at 12, baby. It's time to go to 13 and 14 and 15 and 16. I know that you got your count disrupted and you went back and hit the blunt, but it's time to pick up on seven and eight and nine and 10. I, I, I know that you've been frustrated by where you've been in life right now, but I need you to pick up. You own 33, 34, 35. Who am I talking to in this building? God wants you to keep counting. You've made a decision. And the longevity belongs to those that have counted the cost and are still counting. That have made a decision over and 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 over again. You don't get to 30 years by accident. Highs and lows and ups and downs and successes and failures, they only come because he's still counting. And John, I just want to thank you as my friend for still counting. As my brother, thank you for still counting. On the days when it was toughest, thank you for still counting on the days where you wanted to check out. Thank you for remembering your count. On the days that it was darkest and the most silent and you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. Thank you for still counting. I'm done. With seven minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock, I am done. It's the only way I know how to preach. When he stops talking, I stop talking. Here's what I would like to do right now as everyone stands. I, I, I just want to pray for a few people that might be in this room that need to pick your count back up. I know that's a pretty specific but, but I, I just want you, and I want to do this very, very easy. If you stop counting for whatever reason, there's no judgment here, and you just need to pick your count back up. I don't need to know the reason why you stop counting. I know life can get hard. I know storms can come and situations can get tough. But if you stop counting for whatever reason and you need to resume that count, I just want you to raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. 
Thank you for your honesty, yo. I appreciate your honesty. I do. I do. I know what it is to stop counting. And I know what it is for the Holy Spirit to remind me, hey, bro, you left off here. Pick the count back up. Whether you've been in this four years, 30 years, 50 years, we're still counting. And we'll be counting until he comes back home. What I appreciate about Jesus is that he did not count our sins against us. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. We celebrate a life of a man who has strung together 30 years of yeses. and overcome the many no's that the enemy has tempted him with, me with, all of us with. And if we can become the type of church that keeps the count, God's gonna run up the score. I'm gonna say that again, God is gonna run up the score. So, Father God, thank you so much for this day. This moment you've given us with our leader, our pastor, our prophet, our brother, our son, our nephew, our cousin, our uncle, our friend. Thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful expression of your glory through this earthen vessel. Cover him, cover Av, cover Theory, cover Four, and do things for him, to him, with him, and through him that he can take no credit for but give you all the glory for in the matchless name of Jesus we pray everybody that loves him said amen, amen. Are you kidding me? Hello. I know y'all have extended the time that we would normally be together. I wanna to thank you. I know some of you have to go to work and some of you just are ready to go, I get it. But there are places where you can take photos and all of that, I hope you do it. If there's someone who responded today to this word, I need you to know, as he said, Jesus doesn't count your sins against you, but if you wanna be a part of this church, we are counting right now. We're counting on you to say yes to God. Come be a part of this new story, love story. Join me. Come to the front of this altar if I'm talking to you. If I'm talking to you, meet me right here, right now. Here they come, because God is still counting. And if one, of, if one comes, there's joy in the company of the angels. Y'all gotta do better than this. Man of God, man of God. Welcome, woman of God. Man of God, shake my hand, man. Come on up, King. We got another one right here. Let's, let's, let's celebrate what God is doing. That's your son. Amazing. Why don't y'all come up here? I want y'all to repeat after me. Everybody's gonna say it together. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. 
the blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You are my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Welcome home. Welcome to your family and to the next chapter of your story. Can we celebrate our brothers and our sister who have joined today? You're going to follow that young lady. That's Pastor Tracy Fowler. We're just going to get some information and follow up this week. I can't say thank you enough, so I'm going to have to say my thank yous for next week. Listen, it's the last Sunday before Election Day. If I were you, I'd get everybody that I know in this building next week. I'm not going to tell you what the Lord has put in my spirit, but I'm going to tell it to you like this. Get here so that we can lift up Jesus the way he deserves. Before this country goes crazy, we're going to stay rooted in the word of God. Can I get an amen? Today, thank y'all so much for coming and most importantly, thank you for staying and still counting with us. Can we celebrate the gift that is uh, Tim Ross, pastor, brother Tim Ross. We love you. Thank you for your yes, because your yes has reached people that may not have been reached if you didn't say yes either. So we just say thank you. Thank you for those that traveled far and near. And yes, today we have a cute bookstore set up. You can get some items from Pastor John for slash, 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 slashed, slashed. If you don't have them, Why my stuff we have on a sale? cute, it's on sale for anniversary because he's given his yes to allow y'all to be blessed by it. Amen. Yes, be blessed. Listen, don't forget Hello Fall on Thursday. Bring your babies family friendly costumes only. We won't have any witches, no spiders, and all them people. We don't do that. It's Hello Fall. Okay, and we're celebrating together on Thursday at six o'clock. Ain't nothing and wrong also, with no spider. Next this Monday, spider maybe I meant like something scary. No, yeah. Um, next Monday, our our her story prayer call is a love story prayer call as we prepare for the election, November fourth. I need everybody, men and women, to get on the phone with us. It's usually her story call but we have to cover the nation as we prepare to go to the polls. So we need you to prepare to go in prayer. It's not just the women of God. It's not just her story. It is a love story call. Put everybody on there that you know. We want you to vote. We are not gonna tell you who to vote for. You vote what you think you're supposed to vote. Just exercise your right. Vote the word. And exercise your right. Amen. We don't want anybody left behind in prayer. Because God's still on the throne. I don't care who wins. Amen? Amen. Every hand is lifted. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And I mean this. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. Show you his favor and give you his peace. And now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen. This is Love Story, Dr. John Gray signing off. Love y'all so much. Turn up. <laughs>